I hope that y'all had a worship experience. Uh, and a little touch of God moving in your lives. I know that through that, He moved on me. Uh, I'm not one who, who gets boo-hoo-y behind the microphone. It just doesn't happen with me very often. But when I can't talk because of the, the, the emotion welling up inside of me, uh, is sharing an experience that I heard about firsthand uh, and, be, and, and relating it to being not necessarily there, because you know I wasn't there, but for those who are tuning in, they're like, what's he talking about? It's not 11 o'clock yet, but we're going to go ahead and start, so we'll give them a chance to tune in and tune on and, and go ahead and start. You're not missing much because it's like 56 after, so a couple minutes is all. But we, uh, we sung a song called, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. We've heard that song. A lot of people have heard that song. But prior to that, we watched a video uh, of behind the theme of the song. Why we have that song. There'll be a clip down underneath. And I would encourage you to please watch it, regardless of who you are, regardless of where you come from. Watch that video that we'll put a link of on the Facebook page so that you can enjoy and understand where we're coming from today. Welcome to Intercession City Church of God. We are glad that you came out this morning. Oh, I'm so glad for the people that are here in the sanctuary, people that are here fellowshipping with us because the Bible says forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. And I hope that you are in a church somewhere. If you're listening live and you're homebound, I totally understand. But there is no, no replacement for gathering together with fellow believers to be in fellowship. And your spouse, yes, you can meet with your spouse. And I understand some people, but that's not the same Amen. as coming together. No. My Christianity has been held accountable and put into check by going to church yeah. for the last 40 years as I have been going to church. Prior to that, I went to to church. But once I decided to follow Jesus, things changed. And being in church, it has helped me. It has helped me to stay in check. Yeah. I mean, you can't, you can't live like the devil and go into a church group of people and, and not feel like, oh, I don't know, you feel that conviction. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, man, I've just been such a dog this week. I don't know if I want to go to church. I'm going to go into church and I'm going to feel dirty. Because the presence of God is in the church when you are worshiping. Yeah. And Amen. when you come into church and you say, well, I kind of feel dirty. Well, that's time for you to go to the Lord and pray and ask God, please wash me because I'm dirty. Yeah. Right now, right? You may come in looking like pig pen, you know, but you can go out shining. Like snow. Like snow. Though your sins are scarlet, though, yeah. though your sins be like a dust cloud. You might come in with dusty boogers, but you can blow your nose here and clean out that. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can blow that, blow your nose and get them dusty boogers gone and, and be washed and cleansed. Man. And let me tell you, it makes you feel good. Yeah. It makes you feel joyous. It makes you feel happy. It yeah. makes you feel relieved. The things that we do wrong in our life. They are like a weight on, on us. In Boy Scouts, we used to have to carry our backpack on a, like a hike, and we would have to hike to the campground. They didn't just drive us to the campground a lot of times. It's like they drop you off like five miles, ten miles down the road. It's like, we're going to go on a hike. Well, if you're carrying a case of Vienna sausage in your pack, <laughs> your pack is going to get heavy. And some people, they'd want to sit down. They, they taught us, no, you just kind of... You kind of squat for a little bit and you lean, but you leave your pack on so that you get used to it and you'd have to hike your way on up. But that would be, a, when you got to the camp, you could take your backpack off and it's like, hoo hoo, that's gone. You know, if I was carrying a sack of rocks in a backpack, that would put, that would put a burden on me. But when we do things that are wrong, guilt, remorse, 
sorrow, bitterness, uh -huh. that fills our spiritual backpack yeah. with rocks. Lid. Yeah. And when we go to Jesus and we say, Jesus, wash me, cleanse me, forgive me. I'm sorry for the things that I have done wrong. I accept you into my heart. I accept you into my life. It is like taking off that backpack and you feel the relief. Mm -hmm. I am thankful that I came to that conclusion. Yeah, Welcome to Sunday morning service. It's 11 o'clock and we're going to start off with today's topic as we look further into John chapter 7 and we finish out the chapter today what happened after after the feast of the tabernacles and today's title is never man spake like this man i always i wanted to add an a in there and then i realized no the scripture doesn't say never a man spake like this man right. but never man Right. Nobody talks like Jesus talked. Nobody said what Jesus said. Uh -huh. And so we're going to look into that real quick because this is how it starts off. In John chapter 7, verse number 45, and it says this where we pick up, and now the tabernacle, the thing is over, the people are going back to report, and this is what it says. Then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, why, do you, why have you not brought him? All right. What are they talking about? I, I don't know. Well, let's look backwards a little bit to 32. This is verse 45. But let's look, look back to 32. And this is what 32 says. Jesus was at this time, verse 32, in the temple teaching. And this is what it says in John 7, 32. The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him. And the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. So the Pharisees sent officers to take him, and that's where we pick up that they now, those officers, were coming back. And when they came back to report, they were sent to go get Jesus. Right. Go take him. Go arrest him. Go do whatever. Go shut him. Drag him up be be before the leaders. And they said, why have you not brought him? Well, this is their reply in verse number 46. The officers answered, never a man spake ne like never, this man. Never man, no, a man, right. never, never man spake like this man. Amen. Then answered them the Pharisees, are ye also deceived? So they got back. Well, how come you didn't bring him back? How come you didn't bring Jesus back? You, we sent you out there to go get Jesus. Why didn't you bring him back? Never have we ever heard no man, never man, no human man has ever said the things the way that this guy said them. Our Gospels that we have, Matthew and, and, and Luke and John, these were people that recorded what they saw. Matthew and John, they were there. That's a first-hand eyewitness account of what is being said. The synoptic gospels are, are Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Each gospel has kind of a different perspective mm -hmm. on who it is. Luke was a physician, so a lot of what Luke had to write wrote about the, the miracles that Jesus did. Sure. Matthew, he was a tax collector, and he portrayed Jesus kind of like a king. Mark was all about facts and everything. John was the beloved apostle, and he covered everything from the love. And his, his view of Jesus was a little bit different because it says that he was the one whom Jesus loved. Almost like, out of all those, you think Peter and John. You think of those, those two. John was probably the youngest. Peter was a fisherman. Peter and Andrew were brothers. James and John were brothers. Out of the first four that supposedly was picked, those were the first four. So these guys. They answered them after they said, nobody ever spoke like this guy. They said, are you also deceived? Did you respond to what he was saying? They heard Jesus. And they heard Jesus and it was so intense 
that they got caught up in what was going on and they, they're like, hold on a second, oh, we we're sent to go arrest him. Well, hold on a second, I want to hear what else he has to say. Could you, could you see the conversation? Yeah. I don't know if that happened or not. But I could think it was like, okay, no, just hold on a second, let's not interrupt him. He's said, this dude's good. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Everybody you know, but let's listen to him. No one else has the words that lead to eternal life. No one else has the words. Why is it that Jesus' words are different? Because no one else has the words that lead to eternal life. Some people, some wise teachers, they have words that lead to a better life. Some have words that lead to a more harmonious life. Some have words that will help you to educate yourself. Some have words that will help you to keep your health in balance. Some have words that will help you on a social level so that you can get along with people better. Some have words that stir up violence in people. Some have words that may make you prejudiced or have hatred or, or some people have words that can just make you angry or behave or misbehave. Righteous. This is, a lot of people out there have words. A lot of people today, what do you call those people? They call them influencers. They're influencing people. The words that I say, what would I do if I were to influence? Well, I, I influence people about Jeeves. I influence people about the Bible. Those are things that I do. I mean, I like to teach about mechanics. I like to teach people about Jesus. I like to teach people about nature and education. But Jesus has the words that lead to eternal life. He is the word. If you, if you take most religious teachers out of their books, then you may still have a good philosophy for life. But what about the afterlife? What about the day that you hang it all up on this life and you have to stand before eternity? Well, let me tell you something. If we're all wrong in Christianity and the Bible's all wrong, then hopefully you have felt that, like you have led a good life. You have done good in this life by following Christianity. And in the event that it's all some kind of big hoax that they pulled off with the disciples and we die and we just turn to dirt, well then I'm still satisfied with my life. But if what they said is true, and what Jesus said is true, then the day we die, we're going to have to stand up before some type of a judgment to determine what's going to happen to us for the things that we did in this life. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said we're going to have to give account. These are some of the words that Jesus said, and this is some of the things about Jesus. Who else has the words of eternal life? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said he's the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said he's the only way. And that nobody can get to the Father except for through him. So if you're trying to get to eternal life through some other way other than Jesus, then you're taking the wrong way. Let's just, let's just all roads lead to heaven. Yeah, maybe everybody gets to go to heaven. Some people are just not going to be able to stay there very long. Because some people are going to go there and they're going to think, I'm going to go to heaven and God's going to look at my life and he's going to say, yeah, he was basically a good person. She was a good person. They were good people. They should be able to make it in. The problem is, is God knows your heart. God knows what you do when you're by yourself. God knows every word that comes out of your mouth. God knows what your intent is. I want to help them because really I have a favor to ask them later, so I'm going to help them now so I can get something later yeah. for me. Jesus said he is the only way. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you're not going through Jesus, then you're not going to make it to the Father.
your eternal life is on the line. Mm. This is another thing. There is, just in case it wasn't clear enough, in the book of Acts 4.12, it says there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Man, ain't nobody on this planet that is going to be saved from some other name. No. You can't be saved in the name of Buddha. You can't be saved in the name of Muhammad. You cannot be saved in the name of Charles Taz Russell. You cannot be saved in the name of Joseph Smith. You cannot be saved in the name of Trump. Donald Trump can't save you. Joe Biden can't save you. Obama can't save you. Jimmy Carter can't save you. James Earl Jones can't save you. Martin Luther King Jr. can't save you. But Jesus can. One name. Amen. One name. Hallelujah. I told you, this is what it says, I told you that you would die in your sins. This is the words of Jesus now. For unless you believe that I am He, you will die Hallelujah. in your sins. Praise God. Those are the words of Jesus. I am He. Jesus said, I am He. I am I'm the one. I am the Messiah that you're looking for. I'm the Praise one who's going to come. The Bible uses a word like propitiation, that He has come to take our place because we are guilty. You ever told a lie? Yep. Anybody ever told a few lies in their life? Yeah. Anybody ever told more than a few lies in their life? Told something? Anybody ever oh, yeah. stretched the truth or said something that wasn't true? Like the fish was this big, but it wasn't? That's a lie. Yeah. You know, I do this, I did this, yeah, I climbed this. No. Was that, was that the truth? So so that would make you what? Liar. Liar. The liar enters into the kingdom of God. Anybody ever look at a woman to lust after her? Or a woman ever look after a man to lust after and say, ooh, that's nice. Nice for what? Like the sun setting on the mountains? No, you're not thinking about doing this to the sun setting on the mountains, what you're thinking about when you're lusting after somebody, another human. Right? We, we can even clear that up now. It, Jesus said, if you look on a woman to lust after her, you committed adultery already in your heart. So that makes us adulterers, adulterers fornicators. Just for looking. I tell people, don't window shop. Guys that are married, stop window shopping. Yeah. Because if you window shop long enough, you might just buy something. Mm -hmm. And it might be fun for a short time or a one night stand, but in the end, it's gonna mess up your marriage and it's not gonna just mess you up. It's not the decision that's just yours and yours alone but it's going to mess up everybody's life that is around you. If you have kids, it's going to mess up their lives and it's going to cause a problem. And then you're going to have to muddle through life the rest of the rest of your life with a messed up relationship for all, all for a short time. Sin is fun. Sin is fun. For a short time. For a short time, but we have to give accountable. Yeah. Who else has the words? Who else has the words that lead to eternal life? Truth. Nobody. Just Jesus. Amen. Just the words according to Jesus himself. Now we have to make a decision. We have to make a choice. Is what Jesus said true? Or was he a liar? Well, Jesus, I don't believe he lied. I believe he was telling the truth. Amen. They have tried to debunk Jesus over and over again. They have tried to debunk what he, make him out to be something he wasn't, make his followers out to be something they weren't. They tried to debunk the, the resurrection, say they stole his body in the night, they took it. Jesus didn't come back alive. Let me tell you one of the reasons why I believe it to be true. Because these guys who recorded what it was that Jesus said and what, what it was that Jesus did, they caught them and they took them. And just like that tribe leader in, in the story behind I have decided to follow Jesus, they said, you need to stop talking about this Jesus and stop telling people that he came back alive. Or we're going to fillet you. 
alive. We're going to impale you from behind on a spear. We're going to burn you. We're going to crucify you upside down. All you have to say is, we took his body. They suffered brutal martyrship, martyring. They were brutally put to death, all because they would not deny Christ. They stood up for what they believed in, yeah. even at the cost of their own life. Can Man. you adjust that heater up a little bit? Because it's, it's chilling in here, and I think it's like <laughs> set to 60 degrees. Have any of this is this is what they went on to say. Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees, have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed in him? Remember they had a, that first question they asked? Never a man spoke like this. Well, have they believed? Now they're asking those those people, the religious leaders that are there, that sent the officers after them. The officer said nobody ever spoke like this. This guy has words that we that we don't we don't know about. You don't know how to do it. You know how to do it. And now these religious leaders are asking, "Have any of the rulers of the Pharisees believed on him? Is there anybody in our group of leaders that believes in him?" Now, can you think back to John chapter three, a specific teacher and leader yeah. of their religious order, a Pharisee? who came to Jesus by night yeah. to investigate just who this was. What was his name? Nicodemus. Nicodemus. Nicodemus was probably sitting there with them. You think Nicodemus would say, I believe it was me. <laughs> oh, he, he, it's like sitting in a work meeting and, and the and the superintendent walks out with one of the flags that go on a hole and says, well, today we're going to talk about how this whole flag was snapped in half because somebody didn't get off of their machine and go up and take it out of the hole and set it off to the side. Instead, lazily or skillfully, as they thought, they could ride by it on their machine and reach out and pull that flag out and then just go dump it and never have to stop. I used to try to do that, and it would mess the cup up because it was you couldn't pull it out fast enough. Well, up, yeah. sometimes it just snaps it. No. That's like a forty-eight dollar flag stick, you know. And uh, every novice guy does that. But how do you think that person who was sitting in the group of people felt when he started to address that? Be like, be like Nicodemus in this meeting. Mm -hmm. like, oh, well, this is what he said. But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. So they're still, they're still talking. Nicodemus is now sitting there. My question is, is, they said, these people who knoweth not the law are cursed. So they, they, they knew the law. They knew the law of Moses. The Gentiles did not. The Gentiles followed something else. What about the law? Well, let me tell you a little bit about the law. Neither knowing the law nor keeping it saves the soul. Amen. The law only condemns and makes guilty. The Ten Commandments don't save you. You can't work your way into heaven. Amen. For by grace are you saved. It is a gift of God just so nobody can boast of how they obey the Ten Commandments. I don't think I've ever met somebody that hasn't violated some of the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. I mean, honor your mother and father. Mm -hmm. Is it honorable to smart talk your parents? No, you broke one of the commandments. Mm -hmm. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Have you always taken a day off? Or have you gone through periods where you are working? Mm -hmm. Have you violated the law? Have you lifted something? on the Sabbath that weighed more than two dried figs? <laughs> you broke the law. The, the Ten Commandments. We already covered lying. We already covered lust. 
You know, have you ever put something before God? You know, keep God first. Have you ever put a little statue on your car of St. Francis to protect you? That's like a little idol. You know, superstition, all these things. We, I have never met anybody that has, has going to be able to go up before God on judgment and say, I kept all ten commandments. No, you didn't. You just broke one of them. Thou shalt not bear false witness, you know, because you're saying you did. But let's play this. Let's play this video backwards and see. <laughs> Whoops. Well, this is it. It's a couple verses that I put up here. Romans three nine through twenty three seven seven through twenty five and First John three four. Talk a little bit about the law. Nicodemus finally can't be quiet anymore. So Nicodemus finally opens his mouth. It says, opens his mouth, opens his mouth. Nicodemus saith unto them, this is the same one that came to Jesus by night, being one of them. He was one of the Pharisees, but he also, he's going he's gonna to make a statement here. He's going to say something. Doth our law judge any man before it hear him? And know what he doth, doeth. I'm going to talk like King name, though. Does our law judge any man? So now he's being like a lawyer and saying, Hey, we're judging this person. We don't quite know the facts. Listen to what he's saying. Yeah. So let's take a look at what it is that we're judging him on. Do you think they said, oh, wise Nicodemus, because he, he, he was, he was a, a notable teacher. They didn't say, gee, that's a good one, Nicodemus. Let's look at it. No, because you know what? They have already established their opinion. They already hated Jesus. They already wanted to kill him. Remember last week it said, you go by, why do you go about to kill me? Who wants to kill you? Later it said, oh, this is, the, this is the guy that they wanted to kill, isn't it? Well, they sent people to, get arrest, to arrest him. And they answered and said to him, are you also of Galilee? Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. Well, had they searched and looked, anybody ever heard the story of Jonah? You know, Jonah and the whale? Yeah. That's a prophet. That's a notable prophet. Yeah. And he came from some gath heifer. In 2 Kings 14.25, he was the one who restored the boundaries of Israel from Lebo Hamath to the Dead Sea in accordance with the word of the Lord God of Israel spoken through his, this is scripture now, uh -huh. with his servant Jonah, Jonah son of Amorite. Amorati. The prophet from Gath Heifer. Let me tell you, Gath Heifer, it's like over here near the Dead Sea. And guess, guess which area it is in? Galilee. It's in Lower Galilee. Some people say Elijah came from over there. Some people name several other prophets. So what are they saying? They're just spitting out words. Spitting out words. Yeah. And every man went unto his own house. So they have finished their debate, and now they're done. And this is the end of chapter 7, where it says, Every man went unto his own house. How many went home and searched the scriptures? After that statement, how many people said, Hold on a second. What about Jonah? What about, what about Elijah? I think, I think I'm going to go back and I'm going to go study it. We sit in church too often and we hear something mm -hmm. in Scripture. I used to sit in a church and I would sit and listen to the person and I would, I would swear that they are making up words. <laughs> the first time I heard somebody use the phrase paradigm, we're entering a new paradigm. I'm thinking like, what is he saying? I don't know the definition of that word. So I went and looked it up and it's like, okay, that's a real word. Well, this guy would use words that I wasn't really familiar with. 
And so I would write them down in my notebook because I kept notes and I would write down, what is this word? And I couldn't spell it right. So looking up words when you can't spell them right is a little difficult. It's not like back then we had, everyone was walking around with cell phones that were basically computers and you could just say something like, hey, Alexa, define paradigm. Now y'all are sitting at home and your Alexa's turning on answering right now. And you're saying, Alexa, be quiet. We need to go home and search. When God deposits something in your heart, when a little bit of word goes into your heart and it sparks a little bit of thought, that's the seed of God's word going into your heart. And you're going to have to make a decision what you're going to do with that seed. So you need to dig around, you need to, to fertilize it, you need to put a little bit of water on it, and you need to understand that when God puts and deposits something into your life, it is for the good. God grows stuff in our hearts because the world certainly plants it. I would want you to go home and open up your Bible and read John, cha or John chapter 8 this week. Maybe read it every day. It's easy to do. You don't even have to open up your scripture, but you could actually just have your smart speaker do it for you. You could, there's many apps out there. I, would, I simply would tell the smart speaker to open up New Version Bible, and then on, and, and she'll say, do you want to keep reading in Ecclesiastes chapter 2? No, I don't want to re keep reading because that's where we were reading. Like, I read, I'll say the person, the, the, the smart speaker's name, and I'll say, read John chapter 8. And they'll read. And, and when I get toward the end, I'll say, start over. And they'll start over again. So I'll listen to it over and over and over again. I'll put my headphones in, I'll listen to it. So I would like for you to read John chapter 8 throughout this week as we come back because next week we're going to talk about the woman who was caught in adultery and Jesus wrote something down in the sand and everybody was going to to go after him but it was really a trap they were trying to trap Jesus thank you for joining us today have a wonderful day I'm going to talk to the camera for a second for those who gave, thank you for the people who give here can just put their money in the box there or their offerings or their tithe into the box. But for you that are online, click the link below. It says online offering. You can click right there and give. We are raising funds to replace our roof because the insurance deductibles probably costing would have been twice as much as the roof would cost to replace. So we're just going to have to replace the roof on our own because it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. It is. Roofing so we're contractors gonna, coming tomorrow. Roofing contractors night. coming out tomorrow. So contributions you can put on on your offering roof, yeah. new roof, church roof, uh, and, and that'll help us out to be able to do that. Uh, it's not the roof in the fellowship hall that just needs a seam repaired, but the roof over the main building is the one that we need to replace now. Thank you for joining us. I'm Matt. Randy's sitting down right over there. Keep a praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, Rejoice. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. God bless.